Today I would like to tell you a story. The story of Dell Vastro 5625 versus the Dell Vastro 5620. What is the key difference between these two laptops? The 5625 runs the latest Ryzen 5 5625U which is based on 7 nanometer architecture whereas 5620 runs the Intel Core i5 12th generation 1240p which is a 10 nanometer architecture we'll be studying everything about these two processors and what is the key differences between them the remaining all points remains almost same when i talk about all points i mean design build quality display ports and connectivity everything remains the same now let us just understand a little bit about the 12th generation of processor 12th gen processor that is 1240p comes with 12 core 16 threaded massive cpu let me tell you the drawbacks of this in the later part now this is having an eight high efficiency cores and four high performance cores these cores activate accordingly to your everyday workflow itself on the other hand the Ryzen 5 5625U is running a 6 core 12 threaded massive cpu which is based on 7 nanometer architecture these are all 6 cores are high performance cores now you just imagine here is a 4 core high performance here is 6 core high performance itself there are a lot of differences between these two Let us just take a look at this Cinebench R20 score. I have tested this Cinebench R20 in different scenarios, in different conditions like in midday room temperature, early morning room temperature, AC ventilated room temperature. Everywhere I checked, the Intel scores are on your screen right now. The AMD score is consistent and the scores are on your screen right now. Please take a look at them. Confusing? Now let us just see the test of a Geekbench 5 scores. Here is the Intel story and here is the AMD story. Still not convinced? Let me take an another test for you. Here is a PC mark test. This is the Intel story. This is the AMD story. Can you make any differences between these two brands and these two laptops? Now the key differences between all of these performance and benchmarking is that the Intel is running the 12th generation of processor which promises to beat the M1 silicon and come close to the M1 Pro performance. But in reality, it is not even able to compete the 6 core 12th rated 5625U in my opinion what i think personally is that it is a latest processor but in an old body the body enclosure of this laptop is old the thermal solution of this laptop is old which means these thermal problems are really throttling the cpu to come down to its lower end during testing all of these tests i was parallelly testing the battery life as well both the laptops started at 99% at room temperature and this was a rigorous continuous test after the first cinebench test the battery remaining on the amd it was 97% and on the intel it was 99% there is unchanged battery life on the intel itself moving on further after the geekbench score the amd was having 95% of its battery and intel was just still sitting at 99% that is really impressive in my opinion because after still giving such good scores it is still sitting at 99% which is really impressive showing off the power efficiency of this but wait wait till the end result for your battery test following the test i did run the pc mark test and in this test amd was sitting at 85% and intel dropped to 86% that is a really big leap in my opinion and during pc mark test the intel couldn't even complete the test that is the gpu 3d rendering had stopped in between just because of thermal problems itself the amd did successfully complete and it was waiting for intel to complete but intel was struggling to even get past the pc mark test that is really annoying in my opinion okay so this all was a rigorous testing in my opinion let me just drop down to a little bit and try some video editing i edited a same video on both the laptops for 10 minutes each using premiere pro after 10 minutes of editing on the intel the battery dropped to 75% that is again a big leap of 10% itself following that on the amd when i edited for 10 minutes the battery was sitting at 76% if that is not enough then let us crank down a little bit and make use of this eight efficiency cores let us test now uh, when i just did the everyday workflow itself for example uh, just browsing the internet watching the video surfing on the Web. and that's it when i use the intel version for 10 minutes the battery dropped down 
to 69%. Again, a big leap from 75 to 69. And now 10 minutes of AMD browsing was still sitting at 74%. Now, I don't really know what is the problem with this particular unit of the laptop or all the 1240p laptops are this way. But it is really disappointing that a very much capable chip is present into a really pathetic Dell Vastro 5620 is the chassis what I am talking about. This is having a really low thermal performance that is why this is an underperforming machine I can say. Now let me talk about the fan noise on this. This is a massive CPU running really hot. The fans are even too lazy to start up as well especially in the Intel version. Both are having a minimalistic of fan noise, very very minimal but I can clearly tell that the Intel version was getting really hot. It requires a big thermal solution and that is what is a key takeaway from the Dell Vastro 5620. I cannot really tell you about which fan was making more or less noise since they have the both fans with the same software controlling it. The answer is the max power draw of the Intel is 28 watts whereas the max power draw of the AMD is 25 watts itself. Now less the wattage more is your battery life that is why Intel was drawing a lot of power during its thermal throttling therefore the battery was giving a big leap in the percentage. Okay moving on with the test I did test the GPU test as well not just CPU there are having two different GPU as well. The Intel runs the Iris XE graphics which is really good whereas the AMD runs the Radeon graphics which is not that good in my opinion. Now the GPU score I tested the OpenCL score. For the OpenCL test the AMD stands at 7404 score whereas the Intel stands at 13,114. That is a really big difference in both of them. And finally, the charging time of both the laptops. Now I charged them from 50% to 100% and it nearly took about one hour, 10 minutes or so. Now, if you are cranking it from zero to 100, just multiply the number by two with the error of plus or minus 10% itself. Now this is having a 65 watts of charger, no type C connection, this is a dedicated charging port. Let's just talk about some graph that I took during my test process itself. This is a CPU performance graph. Now if you take a look at the AMD's performance, it is staying consistently at 100% of usage which means there is good thermal solution of this and there is enough power coming out from the battery to power this processor. That's why it is running at 100% performance. Now just take a look at this AMD's graph that you can see on your screen right now. In the first half, performance was about 50% and you know what was going on at this mark. The laptop was making no noise which means there was no fan turned on. The CPU is undergoing immense pressure but still the fan was not turning on. And when the fan did turn on after losing a lot of performance, then the CPU usage went up to 80%. The key point to remember here is that the culprit is the thermal solution. If they change the body of this laptop, Top. If they put in a new thermal solution, then you can buy this laptop. Until now, I would really prefer to go with an AMD over Intel. But in the later part, if it is coming with the software updates and now the key point to remember here is that the performance never reached 100%. You know why? Because of the thermal solution itself. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this video was helpful in making your decision about the 5625 versus the 5620. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Until then, take care.